Hey guys, welcome back to Thorough Capping. Um, I'm here to give you update number two for the Breeders' Cup coming up next weekend, or this weekend, I should say, uh, being that it's Sunday. And I've decided, after looking at the early pass performances, I've decided that I'm going to handicap Saturday's card only. I'm not going to do Friday uh, for a couple reasons. Uh, ma the main reason being uh, I'd rather spend time. I don't have the time to be able to go in-depth with both uh, both Friday and Saturday cards, so I'd rather stick with the Saturday card and do the um, dirt races. Okay, I'm not going to do the turf races this year. I know, you know, that's no fun, and I'm sounding like a bummer. But at the same time, there's just too many turf races that that have the the European and the Asian shippers in there, and there's nothing I can get from the past performances. You know, I can watch I can watch replay after replay on them. But at the same time, if I don't have the, the data to be able to do what I do, uh, you know what, I'm just not able to figure figure those races out. And I just I figure it's a waste of time. So with the dirt races, I'm going to be able to get at least five or six races done. And that's good enough for me. I, I'm not concerned about being able to play uh, a pick six or a pick five. You know, if I could throw some doubles together or pick threes together for the multi-wagers, then I, I'm good with that. But what I want to show you is, since the last video, what I've decided on. With each of the races, I, I already did the last video. I showed you the Breeders' Cup Classic. And I was able to take out a few horses. To, the what do you, Go Rocket Ride uh, suffered an injury during a workout. So he is out. Mage is now out of the Classic. Uh, he's also, he's he's drawing, he, he's actually listed for the, uh, the mile too. So I don't know if he's going to end up running in the mile instead. Uh, and I was also able to take out a few horses that I originally was going to toss anyway. King of Steel. I think King of Steel is out of this race. And he's running in a different race. <clears throat> and same thing with Mr. Cut. So Mr. Cut is not running in the Classic. And the one that's questioning now, that's going to draw in, it looks like, being that uh, Go Rocket and Mage are out. Clapton looks like he will draw into the race. And Clapton, as I mentioned before in my other video, Clapton is figuring pretty well on the Matrix and TC portion of the handicapping. Um, not so much on the follow the figures. I mean, but he's right there with a, he's. I mean, yeah, actually, the overall FTF rating, he's, he's finishing second. So, yeah, I shouldn't say that. He just didn't come up in any individual columns. And then what I did was I took the top contenders, uh, anyone that showed up multiple times in grid number one and grid number two, and now I'm running the pace numbers off of the, just those horses. And these are the horses that made the, you know, that made the list for me to run the pace numbers off of. So I have all the pace data. Now I'm not coming to any conclusions until the posts, uh, posts are drawn tomorrow and I know exactly who's running and who's not running. So right now I'm just trying to get ahead with all the horses that I that I see in the early PPs. <clears throat> I did the I did the dirt mile. Okay, the dirt mile. Uh, if you look over here on the matrix side of the grid, we have four horses that really stand out for me over here. Practical move. Now, Senior Buscador was originally originally listed in the. He still is actually listed in the classic. And if you look at the classic, he's not showing up necessarily as much, or really at all, on the pace he is. Okay, on the pace he has the second, uh, the best uh, second segment pace, and therefore over here he's actually showing up as the best EP horse. But at the same time, I don't know whether he's going to draw into the go into the classic, or the mile. But I really like the way he showed figures in the uh, in the Breeders' Cup mile. Um, the Matrix side, he has the best final fraction. You look over here, he is coming off a double move, double move last run out, and that puts him on top for top TC rating. And then you look at the follow the figure grid, he's also showing up down here as well. The left side of the grid, where we're taking that we're picking apart the individual best on a year, best on the surface, averaging them out, best at the distance, last out. He's holding his own over here, but then at the same time, he does have the best, he's tied with Bright Future for the best last three average. 
Um, I tie the endurance rating into the follow the figure grid. He does have the best endurance rating. And as you saw over here, he does have the best late speed. Given him the second behind Cody's Wish, where everybody knows Cody's Wish, um, second in behind Cody's Wish in the Follow the Figures rating. Now, when I put them together, and I come up with overall power, or we can call this TC-FTF combo, which I did in the third grid, I think. Um, actually, I, where did, oh, actually, okay. I have a consensus grid over here that I'm not going to do until I get the post numbers, but I am calling that TC FTF combo instead of power. Okay, so as you see, when once the posts are drawn and I know the post numbers, I don't have to type names in here, I can put the numbers, but we actually have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 different um, sections of the grid that we're going to evaluate top four on, and then we'll come up with a consensus of our top four plays based on where they show up here, and I'll give them a PowerPoint system. Uh, three points, two points, and one point for the top three. And I left an extra column in case there was a tie between two horses. Uh, but I'll do another video for that. But going back down to the mile here, uh, out of the horses that were showing up from Grid 1 and Grid 2, I ran the pace numbers on them. And Senor Buscador, from the second segment on to the finish, off, his, off of his pace line, he is showing up his best sustained pace and best average pace as well. So I'm kind of hoping that that horse draws into the, the mile and doesn't run into Classic. And finally, I got the, the the Philly Mare Sprint, which is on the dirt as well. I have that done. Good night, Olive. Is probably going to be the favorite in the race. Um, stands out for me over here on the Matrix side. Also top TC rating. Not a whole lot going on on the qualitative end. I go down here to the follow the figures. And again, Good Night Olive is showing up here as well, uh, along with Society. And three witches, and I was able to narrow that down to four horses. Good night, Olive, Kirsten Bosch, Society, and Three Wishes. And across the board on the pace is actually Kirsten Bosch. So we might see a nice little battle here between these two horses, Kirsten Bosch and Good Night Olive. I don't know what the the the, the odds are gonna be on this horse, on these horses. But um, that's where I've gotten so far. I just wanted to give you guys an idea of how I'm going to approach uh, Saturday's races. That is, run all the numbers for the runners from Matrix End, do, the, do our normal uh, TC procedures. Also run the numbers, unless I, ahead of time, toss a horse run all the numbers for follow the figures and then look at the horses that show up multiple times in the top three or four over here and so forth and down here as well and then compile a list of runners to run the pace figures off of as well uh, the next one I'm doing is the Breeders Cup Distaff and I just started listing the number the, the names here and then I'll probably be the last one I'm going to do until the uh, actual official PPs come out. I think I have two more races I want to do that are going to be run on dirt. And I'll have a total of five or six done for Saturday's card. All right. Thanks for tuning in. I just wanted to give you guys an update. Uh, if you're interested in this particular grid here, um, I will rename it. I'll throw it into the grid download page. And you can, you guys can, you know, use that as well. I mean, right now I'm just going to call this the Matrix FTF, uh, TC FTF combo grid. Um, if you're interested, I, I can even throw the pace grid in there underneath. But this is getting, get, this is getting closer and closer now to the original thorough capping deluxe grid that we had in the very beginning when I first came out with the product, uh, where it had pace. The only thing it didn't have, it didn't have the follow the figures on here 
But I'm going to tell you right now, if 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 these show light show up to be a good combination, then this is going to become my uh, normal grid from now on. I know I switch a lot of grids, but I'm constantly, you know, testing as I go along and I'm playing. But if you're interested, the download link for Thorough Capping Deluxe is in the description down below. Um, just click on it and I will answer any questions you need. You can email me at thoroughcapping at gmail.com. Uh, you can throw anything, a question in the comments. You can throw a comment in there. Again, if you're interested in this particular grid and don't want to build your own, I mean, you could build your own based off of just using the individual grids that I already have. And you can kind of build your own. That's what I did here uh, without having to put any formulas in. But if you want the, uh, the work to be done for you and have the grids already compiled on top of each other, and this is what they look like when they're not done. It's a set of two. Okay, it's the TC grid along with the FTF grid, follow the figure grid as well. All right, so thanks for tuning in. I'll be in touch soon. Until then, best of luck on your capping.